Congressman Vargas, thank you, thank you for joining me today. President Obama has pledged to put everything into tighter gun control. He wants universal background checks on anyone trying to buy a gun. He wants a renewal of the assault weapons ban and a 10-round limit to magazines. What do you think of his proposal, and what are his chances of getting it passed? Well, I support him. I support him in each one of those things. I mean, we have to reduce the gun violence in this country. It's uh, unbelievable the amount of violence that we have today. And we can compare ourselves to some of these other democracies around the world. Uh, obviously, we, we have just so much more violence than they do. So I think he has a good shot. Um, obviously, it will be tough in some areas because, uh, you know, people have believed that it's the Second Amendment right to have almost any type of weapon. In fact, some of the crazies, I have to call these guys crazy, believe they can have nuclear weapons at home. You know, that's for a militia, Second Amendment. So it will be hard to negotiate with them. But I think that a lot of us love our, I mean, most of us love our kids, you know, unless you're something wrong with you. And, and we want to reduce the violence. And we see it out there. So I, I'm, I'm very hopeful. Uh, you know, we have some great testimony over in the Senate. I hope we have some, you know, opportunities in the, in the, in the Congress to reduce the violence. And I think some of these uh, measures are good. I'd even go further. Um, how would you go further? Well, I think ammunition is one of the things you really have to go. I mean, why don't you have background checks also for ammunition? They're going to do that in California. I think that'd be important too. You know, a lot of these people, they may have a weapon, but they didn't have the ammunition. They couldn't go shoot people. So I'd go even further. Okay, let's switch gears to immigration reform. It was a big week for the topic with both the Senate and the president putting forth their own proposals. Both plans offer a path to citizenship, but the Senate plan ties it to border security. How feasible is that? Well, I mean, uh, it's a great first step. I mean, let's, let's take it for what it is, very positive. I mean, when you have everyone saying we have to take a look at all the people that are here undocumentally and do something about it, and something that it coincides with, with our, you know, our history, which is you know, compassion, love, family, and all these things. So it's a very positive first step. Now, there are differences, as you said, you know, the issue of border security, and you know, who's gonna be on this commission, who decides? I mean, is, is, is the governor of Arizona the one gonna decide? Uh, you, know, you can't put it in her hands. She'll say there's never enough security, and then these poor people would be second-class citizens forever. They'd never have an opportunity to become a citizen of the U.S. So I, I think it's important that you have a, a process whereby you can become a, pre, a, a citizen, and the president has proposed that, I think, in a better way than the Senate. But you know what? It's a, it's a great, great step forward. Expanding on the topic of border security, the Senate plan calls for adding more drones to patrol the border. As you know, drones are becoming an increasingly important part of San Diego's economy. And yet, the Department of Homeland Security's own Inspector General says that the border drone program has serious management issues. How necessary do you think these drones are to patrolling the border? Well, I have to tell you, it almost seems like a science fiction here with all the drones. I've been reading quite a bit about them. And, you know, I'm not, I'm not really excited about the drones. I mean, I, I think they do have their place. But flying around the border here, I think it can actually do more damage than help. And I do think there's a, a real problem with them. So I, I'm not excited about it. I do think that they have their place. In, in other, you know, confrontational areas and conflictive territories, but here at home, uh, flying around the border where they can you know, crash into homes and have all sorts of other problems, I, I'm not in favor of that. I don't think it helps. The House Republicans have agreed to extend the government's borrowing authority for another three months. Um, that means that this debt ceiling fight is coming back at the end of March. Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, new figures show that the economy actually contracted in mm -hmm. the last three months of last year. Can the United States afford this fight to come up every couple of months? No, and I didn't vote for it. I, I thought it was ridiculous. I mean, one more gimmick, another three months down the road, we fight again. This only hurts our economy. I was one of the few uh, people in Congress that voted against it. You know, you can't create these crises. These crises really is what brings our economy down because you have to have confidence. Before we wrap up here, I want to touch on San Onofre. Sure. As you know, Southern California Edison wants to reopen the plant at reduced capacity, 70%. Cities and the San Diego School District is calling for a trial-like hearing in which Edison is basically put on the stand and required to offer evidence that the plant is safe to reopen and cross-examined. What do you think about this? Well, I sat on the Energy Cost and Availability Committee when I was in the assembly when the lights were going off in California. And we actually put people under oath and found out, you know, what in the world went on. So it's not a bad idea as long as the right people are asking the question and it doesn't become... Who a, do you consider the right people? Uh, people who know what they're talking about. You know, instead of it becoming a road show and just politics, you know, get experts in there to ask them true, you know, questions. Is it really safe? 
You know, do you really have this under control? And if not, why are you firing it up? Makes no sense. The only reason they want to do this is because they want to be able to get some money. And if it sits vacant for a long time, they actually can't recoup their investment. So that's really the issue. Juan Vargas, thank you for coming on the program. It's a pleasure. Thank you for inviting me.